Hey everybody, this is PlayStation live from E3 2017. We're gonna be here counting you down to the PlayStation E3 showcase. I'm Sid Schumann, and I'm joined by some lovely, lovely people, including PlayStation powerhouse himself, Ryan Clements. Sid, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, and uh, of course, the talented and exceptional Meredith Molinari. <laughs> I'm so happy to be back. <laughs> And we've got uh, Malik Forte, a new face. Yes, Hello, yes. Uh, shouts out to the fighting game community, <laughs> the Overwatch community. Super happy to be here. Great community is happy to have you. So, hey, we're here in the historic Shrine Auditorium. Uh, members of the press are here. They're checking out a lot of the sights and sounds, a lot of PS4 Pro, a lot of PSVR. Ryan, any thoughts about that? It's just incredible. I mean, right now we are surrounded by people that, you know, love to be in the gaming space. We got gamers on the right. We got gamers on the <laughs> left. I mean, there's just so much going on here today. And let me tell you what, though. We're all here for video games, right? Yes. Yeah. And one of those video games, Gran Turismo Sport, which we are going to be seeing a lot of today, um, it looks so good, including a very special look into Polyphony Digital, the studio behind um, Gran Turismo. It was just an incredible honor to be there. So I'm really looking forward to, uh, to showing some of that footage. Uh, yeah, but anyway, lots more to come. And uh, Sid, I mean, yeah. it's been an amazing year for games already. It's been incredible. I mean, GT Sport is just going to kind of continue uh, what has been a uh, historic year for 2017 for games. Really, one of the greatest game lineups I think I've seen. Yeah. I mean, a whether you, yeah, I mean, it started with a bang with Resident Evil 7, PlayStation VR. We had Horizon Zero Dawn. We had Persona 5, Prey, which I personally loved. Any, uh, any, any call-outs for you for the year so far? Uh, well, Sid, I have to say that uh, since the month of February, I've been contemplating wearing a red wig <laughs> out in public uh, to more <laughs> emulate the savior of all mother herself, Aloy. <laughs> Some of my friends like to call her Baloy, but whatever you want to call it. But, uh, uh, look, Horizon Zero Dawn, it was the most graphically beautiful game I've ever seen on a console. Uh, I thought it was the most polished open world action adventure game that I've ever Tremendous played. game. Yeah. Meredith, what about you? Well, you know, I love horror. Yeah. Love it. So I think. Resident Evil 7 was the, exactly the horror game that we were all waiting for. I had a chance to play it in both VR and regular. Either way, it's an incredible game experience. You got some really good jump scares. It's got an overall creepy vibe. And it's really messed up at some points, which I totally enjoyed. And Ryan, I know you love Nier Automata. I don't need to hear you talk about it again. Fair enough, Sid. <laughs> but we've got a lot in store. You know, 2017 uh, has been an incredible year, and you're going to see tonight why the future is bright for this year for gaming. I mean, we've got a great show lined up for you tonight. It's a big night for PlayStation. Ryan, anything you're looking forward to in particular? No, I mean, really, I just want to be able to share this moment with everyone that's here at the Shrine. And uh, we just, you know what? Don't go anywhere, though, because <laughs> with this whole, this whole hour that we have with you guys, PlayStation Live for me 3 there's going to be game announcements, release dates, yes. new Ooh. trailers. I mean, it's just there's a lot of good stuff, including, like I said, more GT Sport. That's right. So. Well, let's kick it off. What do you think? I, I say that's an amazing idea. Meredith, I think the first thing we've got is something you're very passionate about. I am so excited. Crash Bandicoot is finally coming back <laughs> end of this month. We're going to get a chance to see him. So let's take a look at a new trailer from the Insane Trilogy. Check it out. Oh, we're on camera right now. All right, well, we'll keep hey, we're gonna, doing this live, right? We're going to keep shuffling my What papers. it's all about. Exactly. Now, the real, the real question is, can everyone hear us right now? Yes. So, so, Tell me about that near Automata. Yeah, all right, well, let me, let me talk okay, about it. Because okay, okay. I didn't have time before, and now we have more time. I shut you down. Near Automata is just, it surprises you in every moment. It has great action, but it also just has this amazing story. Yoko Taro is a genius. I don't think he'd want me to say that, <laughs> but I think he is. He tells amazing stories, and he always keeps you on your toes. So. Are you more of a 2B or a 9S fan? It's like an impossible question. I think I would have to go with 2B. But 9S, I mean, it's just their relationship together is perfect. Oh, oh, we do have a crash here. Perfect. Well, let's, uh, we're going to, I think, take a look at the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy very soon, which we have already discussed Meredith is, yes. is a, fu a fan of. So what do you think? Should we try and toss to it again? Uh, we could try. What Wanna do you think? Try? I don't know. You tell me. You're the boss. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, so look, I'm okay. going to say we're going to try, and then if it doesn't happen, then I'm going to keep talking about Nier for, like, forever. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen. This is the time. Yeah. <laughs> now we're gonna do it. Now, no, we're gonna keep. We're gonna we're gonna stick with uh, near Automata. So we never did get to that point about 9s or 2b. So yeah. who's your favorite? I'm going 9s. Okay, I'm gonna go 2b. But like I said, I think it's their relationship that makes them a great pair. 
And also, the more you play, the more that that story opens up to you and to all the rest of the players, and to the characters, too. I mean, it's a really fascinating layered story, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, yo, also, I saw there was an Easter egg in that game where you could actually fight against, like, the CEO. <laughs> yes, I saw this. <laughs> the, like, the, the head of Square Enix or yeah, something Square makes Enix. a cameo in the game. That's I feel like that requires a brave soul to do that, okay. yeah, yeah. to just put yourself in there. Okay, for someone who's we never are, played it like myself. We are in a live environment, oh, and I did, get, I did get the word that we do have that new Crash Bandicoot. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's check it out. <laughs> Secrets buried the beneath its crumbling the machines ruins. rule these lands. The PlayStation 4 Pro, finely tuned to enrich your experience, propelling you to new heights in gaming and entertainment. Dynamically engineered to utilize power, processing, and core algorithms, the PS4 Pro enhances the comprehensive PlayStation universe. The PS4 Pro presents high-fidelity imagery, creating intricate depth and image context, like cleaner shadows while preserving crisp details from greater distances. See all these enhanced visuals never before realized. Augmented visual designs promote the finest details in PlayStation games, particles of dirt on clothes or rust flakes on metal. These enhanced features make natural elements, like smoke and steam, feel heavy and look real, producing a more authentic and visceral atmosphere. Increased anti-aliasing creates images with rounded edges. Details on faces appear smoother, softer, more convincing, more real. Enhanced gameplay supports faster frame rates, delivering superior action, which provides razor-sharp control for most PS4 games. The PS4 Pro features high dynamic range, offering a wider gamut of visible colors and expanded contrast ratios, moving you closer to all the subtle nuances the human eye is capable of seeing. Experience extraordinary entertainment with 4K streaming and 4K upscaling for video content. PS4 Pro supports both dynamic and native 4K outputs. The PS4 Pro's extensive and ever-expanding library of incredible content allows you to play the biggest and best games available, all here, all now. Bang, bang, won't stop till we're legends. Play on PS4 Pro. Welcome back to PlayStation Live from E3, and we are doing it live here tonight. You know something, <laughs> Ryan? Yeah. PS4 Pro. So this thing's been on, uh, out there delivering 4K gaming since November. Dozens and dozens of PS4 Pro games mm -hmm. out there looking fantastic. What's your favorite? 
I, I think the only choice is Horizon Zero Dawn by Guerrilla Games. They are technical wizards. I love that game. It is gorgeous, and it is a great example of what the pro can do. What are some of the things you've seen in the game that uh, struck you? I saw ants climbing up trees. Did you really see I ants climbing up trees? I did see that. Yes, I did. OK. You really did. I did. I think you should go back and take a screenshot of it. and then I'll, send it. I'll send it to you. Yeah, but, please uh, email me. For me, uh, it's between Horizon Zero Dawn and Rise of Tomb Raider. Absolutely. It looks really, really great in 4K. But speaking of PlayStation 4 Pro, I recently had a chance to catch up with one Mr. Mark Cerny. Ah, I He's, know him. He is the system architect on PS4 Pro, as well as the original PS4. So I wanted to kind of get a sense from him on where he thinks 4K gaming is going in the future. So we had a great chat, and we're going to take a look at that right now. Sounds good. So it's been about six months since we've launched PS4 Pro. And I'm curious, uh, you know, you pleased with the overall reception? Yeah, and the reaction's been pretty good. I mean, some of that's, of course, driven by 4K TV adoption. We're seeing that roughly half of the PS4 Pro users are playing their games on 4K TVs, which means half are using HDTVs. The benefits are pretty good regardless of what TV you're using. For games, I'm particularly impressed by Horizon Zero Dawn. It's quite nice on a standard PS4, but it's gorgeous on the Pro. And for those with PSVR headsets, I highly recommend taking a look at Playroom VR, which is free for anyone who owns the headset, and Farpoint, that just released last month. The crispness and uh, detail of the graphics that you get when you play on Pro are astonishing. So what are you hearing from developers regarding PS4 Pro's increased power? When creating new hardware, we do our best to make sure that it's easy for the developers to use. And I've been hearing that it's been pretty quick to get up to speed on Pro, anything from a few weeks to even a few days in some cases. And a number of the game directors that I've talked to have been pretty excited. Uh, the high fidelity games on PS4 Pro will definitely be closer to their vision. For example, a frame rate has always been important to Kazunori Yamauchi at Polyphony. With Gran Turismo Sport, he'll be able to hit 60 hertz at 4K on PS4 Pro. 4K gaming, obviously, an evolving landscape, right? So curious if there have been any surprises or sort of aha moments as we've rolled out PS4 Pro. I wouldn't call it a surprise, but it was definitely tough going last year at the press conference where we introduced the PS4 Pro. We were trying to show the benefits of a 4K-capable console to people who mostly didn't own a 4K TV yet and couldn't see the graphics that we were talking about. Now that uh, 4K TV adoption rates are up and the Pro is on the market, it's getting much easier to communicate the improvements in the gaming experience. And undoubtedly, the best way we have to demonstrate that leap in graphics capability with Pro is for people to see and play it for themselves, either uh, at a friend's house or at a show like E3. At PlayStation Experience, we learned about Gorilla's Decima engine. And I'm curious if there's anything you can share about how it might tap into PS4 Pro's increased power. Decima is the engine behind a few titles, including Rigs, Until Dawn, and now Horizon Zero Dawn. Guerrilla Games is a very talented technical team, and they have the ability to focus just on PlayStation platforms. So Decima is an engine that is customized to use the detailed capabilities of PS4, and now PS4 Pro. Specifically on the Pro, they're using super sampling to support 1080p HDTVs, as well as higher quality texture maps and increased quality of anisotropic texture filtering. The result is smooth, stable, and clean imagery. Another way to say that is that they've removed most of the jaggies and noise that games typically suffer from. For 4K TVs, they're using checkerboard rendering at 2160p, which brings a truly surprising amount of detail to the graphics. And for all PS4s, at all resolutions, Decima has state-of-the-art support for TVs compatible with HDR, which greatly increases the range of color and contrast. It's, it's not something I can describe well with words. You simply have to see it. Speaking of the Decima engine, we also learned that Kojima Productions is gonna be using that for Death Stranding. So I gotta ask, is there anything you can share about the game or how it might tap into PS4 Pro's increased power? Kojima Productions is doing more than just using Decima. They're actively contributing to its development. Uh, the Decima engine is now a, a collaboration between the two studios. As a result, I think uh, anyone who saw the Death Stranding trailer last December was probably pretty blown away by the close-up of Mads Mikkelsen and the reality of the graphics on Pro. As for gameplay, uh, I have seen some early work. I haven't gotten my hands on the controller yet, but uh, I can say that the game shows a certain clarity of vision. It is, in the best sense possible, a Kojima game. Another game we're all looking forward to is Spider-Man. What is the team at Insomniac Games saying about how they're planning to leverage PS4 Pro? 
I'm actually spending a, a lot of time with the Insomniac team. It's a pretty similar relationship to what I have with Kojima Productions, so I've seen quite a bit of Spider-Man. I don't want to diminish in any way what they're doing for the pro. It's great, but their number one focus is on gameplay innovation within the Spider-Man universe. For example, how does Spider-Man fight? And certainly with his incredible speed and agility, and of course his webs, there's the potential for a whole different style of combat than you've ever seen before. I'm really looking forward to the next reveal of the title. Getting back to your question about specifics on PS4 Pro, they're using a forward-looking technique called temporal injection that lets them efficiently support 4K displays. The display buffers they're using are, are 2160p, so it's full-on 4K, and they can then scale down those buffers to create very clean and high-quality graphics for 1080p HDTV honors. Are there any other titles we should be looking forward to in terms of high-end implementation of PS4 Pro support? I'm hearing some great things about Destiny 2, and also Star Wars Battlefront 2, though uh, I haven't had a chance to do a deep dive on the technology behind them just yet. I should point out that six months in, we're really only getting started with PS4 Pro. If you think Horizon looks great, just wait and see. Developers have some amazing stuff coming on the Pro. More broadly speaking, you've been in the games industry for years. What does the future of games development look like from your perspective? We've been talking about technology here, but in and of itself, technology is not meaningful. It acquires meaning when it enables the game creators to bring something new and exciting into the world. So I'm happy that the Pro allows less compromises in the creative vision, but at the same time, as a gamer myself, I'm always looking for that tool or technology that'll allow games to go to a whole new level, and to bring that tech to the game's community so that the creators can best take advantage of it. As for what that whole new level is, I think we'll just have to wait and find out what Todd Howard and Neil Druckmann and Sam Hauser and the like create next. Mark, is there anything you're looking forward to in particular at E3 this week? It'll be quite the showcase for PS4 Pro. All games in the booth will be running on it. And one of the games will be NAC 2, a title I've been working on for the past few years in collaboration with the Sony Interactive Entertainment folks at the Japan Studio. In fact, we just finished a new trailer for the game, which I'm happy to announce will be launching this September. Here's the trailer. Who makes a million robot clones of themselves? I mean, who does that? it is, I'm in. Awesome. I'm impressed. Little trick I taught And that was an awesome that was an awesome new trailer for NAC 2 and I'm lucky enough to be joined by one Asad Kizilbash. Welcome sir. Thanks very much. It's nice to be here, Sid. Yeah, so you uh, work really closely with PlayStation's worldwide studio. So I'm, I'm curious uh, your thoughts on NAC 2 if you've had a chance to play it. Oh yeah, no, so I've played it a lot and uh, it's it's so much fun. I tell you what, the uh, not only the uh, the platforming which is really addictive, uh, but also the co-op pop in pop outs fun as well. Uh, and we're really trying to make this an accessible game so lots of people can play it. So we're pricing this at $39.99. Uh, oh, again, nice. coming out September 5th. So that's a big deal. That is a big deal. Yeah. So you, you've got all the connections at Worldwide Studios. What else are they working on these days? You know, so I was, if I was to summarize it, I would say it's really summarized to one thing, which is trying to get as many people to play games as possible. And we're doing that in two ways. I think first thing is we're going to continue to focus on making those big blockbuster AAA uh, exclusives like The Last of Us, Spider-Man, you know, God of War. So we're going to keep focusing on that. But we also want to try and uh, reach out to people who don't consider themselves gamers. And so uh, this week at E3, we're announcing something called PlayLink. And PlayLink is a uh, category of games, a collection of games that are socially focused. So social gaming, couch co-op gaming. 
um, that's really going to focus on bringing people together, playing together, social games. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's something that we yeah, haven't done before that we're really excited about. That's great. So I think we have a trailer. We actually have a debut on one of these. It's Hidden Agenda right. from the creators of Until Dawn. Let's check out the first trailer for Hidden Agenda. The game is a gritty crime thriller um, designed to be played on your own or collaboratively with a group. In this game, your choices really, really matter. The uh, characters in the drama can live or die based on the decisions that you make. It's also a game about trust. Uh, so it's about the, the, the trust um, between the, uh, the, the characters in the game and their relationships, but also the trust with you and your friends playing the game in the room. The story of the game centers around a serial killer known as the Trapper, who has been murdering um, numerous people for, for, for some time. What he does is he, he sets up traps on their bodies, uh, the, the bodies of the victims, which are designed to kill the first responders. You play Becky Marnie, who is a homicide detective in charge of the investigation, and Felicity Graves, who is the district attorney. We saw how people played Until Dawn, which was, although it was a single-player experience, on the internet we saw loads and loads of people streaming it together as a group um, and all shouting out the answers to different decisions. Um, we thought we could make something with that. In this story, everybody can die as a result of your actions or everybody could live. Your decisions are almost like taking a pebble and dropping it in a pond. Ripples will spread out and affect other parts of the story, but if you drop a rock in there, big waves will spread out and have huge impacts. Hands up now. What Playlink has, has brought to, to, um, to the game as a second screen for everyone that's in, in, in the room playing it um, has meant that it's more accessible, arguably, than a, um, than a standard controller. It's given us options on hidden information and private information that we can target to specific players. So, for example, we have uh, what we call hidden agendas, where I'm, I'm, I've been given something, that, a secret objective to complete that none of the rest of the guys know. So they're suddenly all trying to work out, one, who's got that hidden agenda, and also then what it is, and trying to prevent that from coming true. And, and I'm trying to just convince them to do what I want them to do without letting them know that, that I'm up to no good. If I gotta go out, I ain't going out a liar. Then tell me the truth. Miss Graves, I did not kill anybody. We think that we've got a great game for um, encouraging social play. It really is something that, although you can play it single player, you're going to want to play this game as a group. Hey! What's happening out there? Oh, it's not as much fun when they don't let you leave. And that was the world debut of Hidden Agenda, part of the Playlink collection. Good stuff, Asad. It's, it's pretty impressive. And also remember, this is the same guys who did Until Dawn. So uh, really good game. And again, use your smartphone as a controller. I think it's a great way to get new gamers. And so that's one example. We've got another game actually under Playlink that's called That's You. And it's completely different from Hidden Agenda, where it's all about uh, people trying to figure out who, who's who based on the answers your friends give. Uh, and again, the, the knowledge you have of your friends, the camaraderie is just so much fun. Uh, but again, a great example of a game that can reach people who aren't usually gamers. And I think we've got a video of that as well. This That's show. great. Let's check out the world debut of That's You. First things first, this is a game like no other. Here, the only thing you need to know is each other. Let's do it. I will go easy on all of you. <laughs> Time to start with the questions. Who is most likely to laugh at a teacher's lame joke? Okay. I don't want to judge this person. <laughs> One of you needs to take a photo of someone else, and then we can get started. <laughs> that is so good. Time to see what you've come up with. Oh, that is wonderful! <laughs> this is 
What after dinner entertainment would they provide? <laughs> <laughs> Who is most likely to make out with a stranger at a fun fair? <laughs> Check out the picture and get thinking about what you're going to do. We're about to start. That was That's You, part of the Playlink collection. Asset, that, I've got the question everyone wants to know. Does Shuhei Yoshida actually come with the game? <laughs> you know, you, you and I know Shu. He would probably want to ship with every single game. I think so. Uh, we did try, but we couldn't fit him in the boxes. <laughs> I, we, we tried. What can I say? So again, these are great examples of games that can reach people who aren't really gamers by using your phone as a controller. Uh, and so all our uh, Playlink games are going to come out in the holiday. Um, but what we're doing is we're taking That's You, and we're offering it free to Plus members uh, for a limited time coming out on uh, July 4th. So I think that's pretty exciting. So we're really excited about PlayLink games, but as we said earlier, we're focused on those core games as well. And one I'm really excited about is uh, Matterfall, which I know you guys know. Look, I'm a huge Housemark fan. I mean, Dead Nation, Rezogun, on and on. And I heard that we're going to debut first gameplay of Matterfall right here and right now. So let's get right to All that. Right. And that was the world debut of Matterfall, looking fantastic. Another Housemark gem, I, as so expected. I, I know, and as you said, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Housemark. Loved Rezogun, I love Dead Nation, Superstarter, some of my favorite games. So if you love those games, you're going to love Matterfall. And it's coming out this summer. It's coming out this summer, very excited. So hey, Asad, while I've got you, I wanted to touch uh, base on the game formerly known as Hot Shots. Oh, yeah. This is, so everybody's golf is, actually, first of all, as you know, it's actually their 20th anniversary. I did not know that. At the franchise for 20 years. It's the same studio, Clap Hands, um, and this is their debut on PlayStation 4. And we actually just finished uh, an internal beta, went really well. We're incorporating some of the fan and, and uh, uh, feedback into the game. It's looking phenomenal. All right, well, I hear we have new footage for everybody's golf, so let's take a look at the latest. <laughs> So it happens that Hot Shots CDs, now everybody's golf, that were born in PS1 days, but are still you know, alive and kicking throughout the life of PlayStation. あの、日本ではゴルフゲームって全く売れてない時代だったんですね。リリースされてたゲームがこんなの待ってたよみたいな雰囲気でどんどん受け入れられてきたので、とてもあの。Every single title in that franchise is uh, meticulously created by the same creator with the same vision and uh, with new technology and new features. は、えっと、
ていうゲームだったんですけども、えー、と入みんなのゴルフはあの9ホールが一体ドンとこう目の前に広がっているっていう世界を作るところまで来れたので、えー、とそういう意味ではあのショットの気持ちよさだけじゃなくてゴルフ場に行った時の開放感であるとか。えー、とオンラインにつないでギャラリーになって人のプレーを見るような楽しさみたいなところまで本当の意味でのゴルフ全体を、えー、再現できるっていうゲームになってると思いますオープンワールドとしてでそこで、えー、といろんな人がオンラインで入ってきてる中で、えー、ゴルフプレーをしたりその他のアクティビティをしてきたりするみたいなところで。Is actually the literal translation of Minna no Golf. That、uh, in Japanese means everybody's golf. Nice shot. So, that I think is very, very important for the fans of the franchise to be able to enjoy the same consistent feel to it with the every time you know, some updated new features or、uh, in- inclusion of new text. Moshi Hot Shots Golf to you. タトゥーを入れてしまっている人がいたらもう一回エビリバディズゴルフというタトゥーを入れ直してくださいえー、とね97年当時のグランツーリスモの開発の終盤というのはもう自分たちが世界的に見てもねすごい仕事をしてるんじゃないかっていう手応えが、まあ、日に日に増していってでとにかくパーフェクトなものを出したい。もうですこれが出せれば、まあ、死んでもいいと思ってね作ってましたねそれが97年当時に最初のグランツリスムを作ってた時に僕が感じていたことなんですけれどもそのために僕ら打ち込んでるわけですけれどもこれはすごいタイトルになるぞっていうね手応えを、まあ、日に日に感じているんですねですから今回の GT スポーツを作っている時の感覚というのはこれまでのシリーズの中で最も GT1 を作っている時の感覚に近いと思います、えっとね、僕がポリフォニーを作った時、まあ、ちょうど19年前ですねにどんな会社にしようと思ったかというと、まあ、ある意味大学のキャンパスのようでありながら最先端の研究所のようでもありながらなんかこうハイスクールのクラブの部室のようなでここがプレイエリアです、まあ、グランツイスモスポーツでは20人で、まあ、オンラインでの対戦なんかをやりますけれどもそういった対戦プレーのデバッグのためにこのファシリティを使ってますでこの辺りが、えーとね、ランドスケープデザインですトリフォニーというのは今200人ぐらいのメンバーでグランツリスモを作っていますけれどもその200人のメンバー一人一人がその人でなければできない仕事をやってるんですねつまり入れ替えが不可能な人たちが200人このポリフォニーでは働いていてグランツリスモを作っていく過程で集めた資料こういったユニットもちゃんと一つずつ中身まで正確に作っているので大事ですねこういったロゴのデザインであるパックアートのドライヤーで,でここはこれまでグランツーリスモでいただいた、まあ、アワードであるとかトロフィーであるとかそういうものが置いてあってこれが僕は2012年頃に使っていたニュルブルクリンクのヘルメットですねはいここが僕が普段、えー、仕事をしている場所でえっ、ー、とそうですね、まあ、大体ビデオカメラとかカメラとか
あるいは音楽用の機材だとか、まあ、そういうものがで常にこう埋まってますねいろんな実験がここで行われていますでここが僕のデスクです今なんか弾いてもらえませんかなんかひじゃ弾きましょうか GT スポーツのクローズドベータのテーマでも弾きましょうか<音楽>そうですねあのグランツリスモスポーツというのはまあ大変こう規模の大きなタイトルですね。GT1 が登場した時のグランツリスモというのもやっぱり当時のプレイステーションこれまでのグランツリスモが GT6 までが、まあ、ファーストジェネレーションだとするならば今回の GT スポーツというのはセカンドジェネレーションの大きく変化を遂げたグランツリスモということになります。Oh man, GT Sport is looking so good. 4K, 60 frames, HDR. How do they do it, Ryan? I know, it's incredible. It was an honor for me to be there. And they have VR, too. That's right. And mm -hmm. actually, speaking of VR, we, oh, uh, wow. I recently had a chance to meet up with PlayStation's research and development team, you know, R&D team. So got to look to meet these guys. They're pushing like gaming technology to the brink every day. So uh, let's see what they've got. Innovation is a little bit messy, but it's also very rewarding because you sit down and you think about things and you talk to the customers, 
you find out what they want, and then you look around at what's available in technology terms, you brainstorm, you tinker, you try ideas out, all of which is great fun. And then you have to kind of crystallize that and bring it together and finally make something. Today, I'm pleased to announce that PlayStation VR will launch globally in October 2016. I think the one question that we all had in our minds was, how can we make the gaming experience as immersive as possible? Then we tinkered. We kind of played with prototypes, and some of those prototypes are really wacky looking things, quite amusing to look back on now. I mean, even the element of how you fit it on your head, the design, the aesthetics, the comfort factors, all of these things are very important. And that's hard work, but it's really rewarding work, because eventually you see it, and you see people using it, and you realize, wow, I helped make that. In order to make a product like PlayStation VR, we have to look at what's available in the market as well, because cost is important. So we all have cell phones now, and, and you don't think about it, but some of that tech is fundamentally what we needed to build VR with, like the high resolution display. The accelerometers and the gyros were exactly what we needed. We weren't thinking specifically about virtual reality, but pretty soon in the development of Move, we had one of our researchers, and he strapped a PlayStation Move to his head and interacted with the TV. And when he moved his head, the image on the screen on the TV moved in the same way. And this was like a kind of 1.0 VR, if you like. Some of the technologies that really excite us in the lab right now are things like artificial intelligence. And very specifically, there's this area called natural language understanding. If you've ever talked to Siri or Amazon Echo, you'll know what this is. But imagine if you can use that to talk to game characters, to actually have a dialogue Instead of selecting the dialogue options using a joystick, you actually just speak it naturally. Another thing that we want to improve in virtual reality is display. So right now we use two panels, one for each eye, and that's how we generate the images using a simple technique called stereopsis that gives you a depth cue. It explains to the brain how far away something is, but the brain also thinks about focus. Think about focus in, in terms of what you do with a, a camera or binoculars where you have to move a little ring in order to focus an image. Now the eye does this all the time and you don't really think about it, but in VR that doesn't happen today. And so your eye is not constantly refocusing, whereas in the real world it would be. So what we want to do is we want to bring that in so that we also have that refocusing happening in virtual reality as well. And so I think in the future as we develop all these technologies, we'll get to a place where we can do both of those things, stereopsis and focus, and that'll give us the ultimate visual experience. And one of the areas that we're very excited about is gaze tracking, so understanding where you're looking. So to build that into a game and to have both the real human players, but also the non-player characters make those same assumptions about eye contact. And it can get kind of uncomfortable because you're staring at them. And if the eyes give you a window into the mind, imagine what you can do if you can actually read the mind. And this is a little bit further out. This is almost in the realms of science fiction, but it's grounded in the laboratory as well, which is a brainwave interface, where you actually measure the brainwaves and it gives you an insight into what people are thinking at a very basic level. So this is all ideas, this is the future, looking just over the horizon. And maybe we'll see it, maybe we won't. What's important to us is pushing the future of gaming. It's really driving the next big thing. And when we see somebody enjoying that technology that we've helped to build, it makes us really proud. Fascinating stuff, you know, and uh, I'm actually very pleased to be joined by a very dear friend of mine, Mr. Andrew Kelly. Thanks, Sid. Delighted to be here. So glad you could make it. So I understand you had a little bit of a hand setting all this up here tonight? Yeah, yeah. We're here at our arcade before the big media showcase. So we're showing off some of the games that people will see at E3, and I helped put all this together. So we got some really, really cool stuff here, and I'm, I'm excited. Very good. So I hear PS4 Pro, PSVR are going to be a big theme here tonight. Anything yeah. you might be able to share with us on that Absolutely. front? Absolutely. We have a new game for PSVR that we're excited to announce, Oh. and that is Super Hot VR. Let's, Let's check it out.
super hot, super hot, super hot, super hot, super hot, super hot. Super Hot VR and Spark, two stylish games, both coming to PlayStation VR. Super Hot will be out in a few weeks. Spark a little later this year. So, Andrew, uh, anything else to reveal to us here tonight? Well, we have another game that I think was teased last week and is a long-running franchise, and we have a new entry in it. So let's take a look at what that is. Plans for the wall have been approved. Cuban commandant died. The UK has left the European Union. Which has caused a big crisis in Spain. They have also aligned themselves with people to test ballistic missiles. Thanks to me, Tropico is an undisputed paradise. But the values of our paradise are now being threatened. Threatened by populists and despots. I, El Presidente, will prevent this. I accept the nomination for another presidential term. will make Tropico even greater, even bigger, and even better. Instead of walls, I will build bridges, bringing Tropico's islands and people together, rather than separating them. New means of transportation will offer great opportunities of exchange to you and our visitors. I will bring diversity, culture, and the wonders of the world to Tropico, so that all other nations will look upon us with envy. Hey, and that was the world debut of Tropico 6. It's coming to PS4 in 2018, Mr. Andrew Kelly. New developer, ton of new additions, good stuff. Exciting. Yeah. So is that it? Is that, are we out of games? No Actually, we've got another one here, and this is one I've been looking forward to talking about. So um, it is a game that it was a massive critical hit when it came out last year. Mm. It's got a huge fan base when it launched on PC. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's, it's something that I think a lot of fans have been dying to see for a long time. Oof, so excited. without further ado, I would say, let's check out that game. Let's take a look. This summer, PlayStation owners 
will finally feel the rush of burning in hell. Yeah, it's Undertale. Next, folks, we've got a special physical version of Undertale that comes with an illustrated story booklet, as well as a beautiful collector's edition box set that includes the game, the booklet, the official soundtrack, and a dazzling gold-plated musical heart locket. Undertale for PlayStation 4, part of a complete breakfast. Also coming to PlayStation Vita. That was awesome. Undertale is coming to PS4 and Vita. Andrew, I never played that one. Ah, it's so good. I have played it. It is full of heart. It's charming. It'll make you laugh, make you cry. You gotta play it. So, speaking of masterpieces, I understand you're a big fan of Nino Cooney. Yes, yeah. I really sunk a lot of time into the first one. It's 80 hours. Gorgeous game. Uh, yeah, huge fan. Well, this next piece is gonna make you really happy, I think. We have a new trailer for Nino Cooney 2, Revenant Kingdom. So, let's check it out. Such a beautiful kingdom. But then, beauty never lasts. I see something in you. We all do. A good king listens to his subjects, Evan. There is one who brought the world together. And who was that? Ferdinand. Mighty Ferdinand. Bella! You will return her to me. <laughs> so long. My plan is complete. Your king's bond is mine. Great stuff. Nino Cooney 2 looking good. And welcome back, folks. Thank you. Not long, just moments away here from the PlayStation E3 Media Showcase, kind of the main event of the night. I think we've had a lot of great stuff on the show here tonight. But um, I was saving one extra thing. There was a, a special something I wanted to save. So um, have you guys heard of PlayStation Experience? I thought, yeah, I think so. I think yeah. I've heard of it. It's called PSX <laughs> sometimes, we call it. So this is the thing where fans can come, they can gather, we have games that aren't out yet, they can play, we bring game developers, they can hang out with panels. It's, it's a big party, basically. Yeah, so, well, I can actually confirm to you guys tonight that uh, PSX is happening for 2017. Nice. And it will be coming December 9th and 10th to the Anaheim Convention Center. We, uh, we loved our time at the Anaheim Convention Center last year, and we're yep. going to be back. So Wonderful. Very nice. My suggestion is uh, to book your travel, to get that time off, you know, before all the other folks at the company do, okay. and get ready to have a great 
great time. It's and always a blast. It's such an incredible, so special experience. Do you guys have any uh, particular favorite memories of uh, PSX? I know you've, you've both been. Yeah, you know, I think one of my favorite memories of PSX was getting to watch people who had never done VR before do VR. And then the minute they take that helmet off, they're like, whoa. Like, that was a really cool experience. Really it's special. really powerful stuff yeah. to see people do that. What about you, Malik? Uh, for me, it would be uh, the second one when Sean Layton came out on stage with a Crash Bandicoot <laughs> shirt on, uh, but didn't announce for Crash Bandicoot. Pretty much trolled the entire audience. I thought that was pretty funny. And then Capcom Cup was that year, too, so I enjoyed that. That was a awesome. good year. They're all great experiences. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think it's got to be the reveal of The Last of Us Part Two. Uh, I mean, just the way that that built up and just seeing the emotion, you could feel it radiating out of the audience. It really is something special. We, we, of course, we'll stream it. We'll do all of that. But I really urge people to, to come. So it's December 9th and 10th, Anaheim Convention Center. We're doing PSX. Oh, awesome. There. It's official. Now, ticket, ticket info, we're going to have that in the weeks to come. We okay. don't have any of that now. We'll have further details in the weeks to come. But for those who want to book travel, for those who want to, like, get time off, now you know. So hey, folks, it has, been a it has been a fantastic night, but we are now ready for the PlayStation E3 Media Showcase. Let's go to that now. Any last requests? Thank you.